Hello everyone, this is Nick from HF Survival School back with you with another video on this hot hot summer day uh, Today we will be continuing our, our uh, bushcraft prize guide series uh, In the first part we split the thing in three pieces Beginner, Intermediate and Pro This is the second video, therefore this will be about Intermediate uh, level To understand towards who today's video will be helpful uh, someone that is intermediate, of course, in my opinion, I'd consider someone that is between a beginner and a pro. I consider myself uh, being in this group as well because it has been quite a few years since I am uh, involved in this craft and uh, I'm not a pro by any means but uh, I have moved from the just the day trips that any kind of beginner is doing and I have done some multiple day trips, multiple day hikes, uh, multiple day uh, fall and winter trips. Uh, going out in the winter in heavy snow and heavy cold is whole another story. It needs whole another skill set so I have done all of that cold weather wet weather and the most important thing is that you don't only go out in that kind of harsh weather but you go out uh, with um, minimal gear which I have done uh, it was not uh, the most comfortable trips by any mean many times you have seen me freeze in winter by not having proper gear but not having proper gear never hold me back and even though I came quite close to losing my toes one time when I went in minus 20 Celsius uh, weather uh, with my Wellington boots uh, nevertheless it was a great experience and uh, that's how you get a thicker skin and that's how uh, you involve and get better and better at something so today I will be aiming towards uh, this group and uh, all of the gear which I will mention are just my thoughts and based on my experience and uh, my skills out in the field. Me and the dogs catch the breath. We stopped at this uh, survival shelter that uh, I built uh, this winter. I will link the li video down in the description. Uh, me and Rocco stayed here with three tools. Uh, I, as I remember, it was an axe. Uh, it was a ferro rod and a mylar blanket, so we stayed at night here with just three tools. So it is a very interesting video and you should definitely check it out. So without further ado, let's move on and uh, hike up at our secret shelter. Secret shelter and I will show you all of the gear there. Having a small container like this is very useful when you have dogs so that they can drink water from it comfortably. Just like previously, let's start with the most important part and the part which I'm sure you are the most looking forward to that is cutting tools and uh, to be exact, knives. Uh, let's start from the left. The first knife that I would recommend is a Yachtkit KNV2 knife. This, uh, many of you will probably say that this looks quite familiar and you would be right, this looks like a, a Falcon even uh, F1 I think. Uh, it, has a, it has one of my uh, favorite uh, wet conditions handle, it has a rubber handle, I don't know exactly what kind of rubber it is but it is very grippy and it has this kind of checkering which usually uh, shotguns have and this checkering gives you amazing grip. There's no way this knife could slip. I have used this knife to skin animals and with very, very wet, bloody and cold hands, this knife doesn't slip at all. The grind starts from the spine and goes all the way down until it gets that convex edge. It has a decent edge. I uh, couldn't say that it is my favorite, but it is a very good user and it cuts very well. The steel 99CR18 MOV uh, looks familiar, uh, you'd be right. It is uh, very close to 9CR18 MOV, but the manufacturer Yachtkit says that this is different steel and this is 
better with superior heat treat. Overall, I really like this blade. It is a great user blade and it comes with this Kydex sheath. You can also take a leather sheath, but I went with Kydex since it has this kind of modern look. Kydex is very good. It snaps inside very securely. There is no way this will come undone. Uh, they also have option to add a fair rod on the side. I also have that option. It has a snap. So it is a very secure, very decent, nice uh, blade and nice sheath. So the price of this knife at the point of making this video is $104. That price range is what I think an intermediate bushcrafter should uh, look knives for. Again, you may get away with the $10 Mora, but since you are involving more time and uh, since you are involving uh, more effort, then you deserve a better knife. And the $100 range I think is the perfect price range to get a decent, very nice, both with uh, durability and with looks knife. The second knife I will recommend is from Spain, the Qdeman MT5. From my experience, this knife won't win any beauty contests, but that really doesn't matter because it has a great overall feel, it has great build quality, it has a micarta handle, therefore you can use it in very wet conditions and nothing will happen to it. Uh, it is quite thick, therefore you can baton with it, and because it has a full flat grind, it is very good at batoning and splitting wood. It also has red liners. Since it has a hole on the back and on the front, uh, you can attach this to a stick and make an improvised spear to uh, make it a bit more multi-purpose item and uh, more useful in a survival situation. After many many years of use and abuse, uh, the knife looks even better than it looked uh, when I first got it, so it is recommended without a doubt. Uh, this sheath didn't came with it, it came with a separate leather sheath, but uh, I made one aftermarket for it and this was the first knife sheath that I have ever made and since then it feels just right. It is broken in very, very good and it has a nice patina and nice overall look. So the price of this knife at the point of making this video is between 90 to 100 dollars. The third knife I want to talk about and by far my favorite is this one right here. You may not find it familiar because uh, it is made by yours truly, it is made by me. Nick's Bushcraft Shop exclusive. The blade is made from 80 CRV2 high carbon steel. It is equivalent to 1080 but on steroids, so this is a, a better steel than that. It is my favorite and my go-to steel on any kind of outdoor knife and any knife that I make. The handle is walnut, it is treated the old timer way with treatment of a few weeks with boiled linseed oil. It has a brass bolster and uh, red and blue uh, G10 liners, which is optional, you can get those, you can get other colors as well, as well. This is my favorite blade because by far it has the best ergonomics than any knife I have ever held. Your palm is a bit deeper on this place, therefore the handle is a bit thicker on that place, a bit thinner on this and these sides and overall the ergonomics is just perfect and made to sit like butter in your hand and give you an amazing control and very comfortable grip without any hot spots after a lot of use. I make this knife in many handle configurations, there are a lot of woods available, there's mammoth ivory available, iron wood, etc. I can comfortably say that this knife has the best heat treat possible on any kind of high carbon steel blade. It is very durable, it will stay sharp for a crazy long time, it comes razor sharp, it comes hair popping sharp. And uh, I'm not saying this because it is my knife, but I am saying it because uh, the way I make everything I try to do only the best. Of course this is not a, a high-end powdered steel, super steel, but uh, this is my favorite and go-to steel on any kind of knife that I make. Price usually is $150 on my Etsy shop uh, called Bushcraft Shop, uh, but since you are my subscribers and I care about my subscribers, you will get a discount and you will get for $130. Uh, again, if you are watching this video two years, three years later, I don't know what inflation has done and what will be the price then, but 
soon after this video any subscriber that contacts me this knife will be 130 dollars really sky's the limit i can get a handle with any kind of material uh, this knife at this price point has a scandinavian grind it has a high scandy grind with machine finish and a micro bevel for extra durability i can recommend this blade to anyone and the main thing what i would recommend is because it has a lifetime guarantee by nick you get a lifetime guarantee by me no matter whenever whatever it happens i will make sure to satisfy you uh, depending on the situation and that's how much i believe in my products because i want my name to be associated with quality it comes with a very thick vegetable tanned leather sheath i get my leather from uh, the united kingdom this is one of the best quality out there it is four millimeters thick uh, this is a user knife so uh, it is the uh, sheath is not as shiny as you will get it when it is brand new it has basket with decorations two-tone color burnished edges uh, this one has a dangler i have the dangler on my belt uh, i was lazy to take it off so that's a good uh, pro for the knife for the dangler system because you can just snap it off and take the blade off your pants also you can get just a regular belt loop maybe if you prefer that but uh, without a doubt i can recommend this knife to anyone i launched my brand new website called nixpushcraftshop.com so you can visit my website it will be also linked down in the description there is a lot of interesting and unique stuff that i can comfortably say that you probably have never seen high-end knives high-end ferro rods you it is not mandatory to buy something maybe you just are interested in to see unique stuff so uh, i recommend going there nixbushcraftshop.com and this will be my knife of choice for any kind of bushcraft on intermediate level after you have your primary cutting to cover then you need a way to process firewood in this case again like in the first video i will recommend a backhoe lap lander for these kind of short trips but for longer trips you will need a bigger saw and that's when this thing comes in i would recommend getting a backhoe deadwood saw blade it costs ten dollars so it is dirt cheap it is cheaper than any saw out there because it is only the blade and since you are intermediate and since you have some skills now you can already make a frame for it again there are many frame designs uh, i went with this one this is not my first uh, frame uh, buck saw uh, i have some runes on there which say hf survival school because you know you have got to have a viking you know because if you have a viking style buck saw then you can cut food twice as fast so having a saw like this is very useful i have cut very thick pieces of wood with this uh, it has been very helpful on winter trips and uh, having something like this is very good because it is another another project that you make for yourself and therefore you are being more self-reliant of course you cannot forge your own saw blade but uh, making a frame for it is a good skill good practice and good item especially uh, since it is so cheap you are getting a lot of bang for your buck it is recommended to anyone and it is a great great piece of kit now that you are not a beginner and you are involved in multiple day trips and also in winter trips a small hatchet uh, yes it is better than nothing but won't do much when you have to split thick big uh, logs in the winter and that's why you will need a bigger axe uh, this time you will need uh, a full-size axe i'd say this this is not really a full-size axe but uh, compared to the, a hatchet this is considered a full-size axe to choose the perfect size pack axe for you uh, hold it by the hand or the other way around doesn't matter and the handle uh, should be as long as your arm from your palm until your armpit now this is a bit short for me but again for most people this will be ideal uh, the x i will recommend is 
uh, a Hulta Force a B4 STX. Uh, this is a premium X, and uh, I would recommend this to anyone because uh, since you want to get involved and want to uh, stay in this craft for a longer time, getting quality is uh, very good. And if you are getting 1X, it better be the best, you know. So uh, this is pretty expensive uh, X, it costs $150. Mm, uh, but again, if you are gonna have one X, it better be a best one. To protect the handle, you need an X collar. I also changed the original X mask and uh, changed it to my handmade one. And here's the X. It has a very nice head shape. You can choke up on it. And since it has small beard like this, it is very good to have small detailed cuts. Also, you have the long handle to have a nice swing. This axe costs a premium because it is hand forged, it is made in Sweden, and it is made to last generations. I don't know what kind of steel they are using, but it is an amazing steel. It is hand, hand forged, therefore the whole axe that you see is made by hand. As you see, it has a nice thick profile, therefore it is very good at splitting. And also, it has a very sharp edge, which I try to maintain and keep a mirror polish to make sure that it slips through wood even better. I have polished the back side, it came with a grind, uh, but I polished it up uh, because uh, now this is very useful for flashing animal hides and hitting this uh, mirror polish and trying to separate the skin from the flesh. So uh, that is also a good multi-purpose uh, thing. It is a beautiful X and really nothing bad I can say. Again, I'm recommending this uh, because I really like it. No, I don't work for Hulta Force. I'm not paid by them. I'm not paid by anyone. This is everything I say is based on my experience and no one has to pay me to uh, say an honest opinion and recommend a good piece of kit. Again, I'm not saying that you, if you are on, on a budget and you cannot afford it to uh, get a second mortgage and buy such an expensive X. Uh, in that case, there are a lot of good vintage access out there access you can go on ebay uh, get a rusty old exit and just polish it up clean it up sharpen it handle it and in that case uh, you will also have a very high quality x but that involves more work not everyone uh, may be handy in that kind of uh, restoration work but again if you can do it then go ahead and for 150 dollars you can quite buy quite a few x heads and nice hickory handles also this kind of hand shape handle shape is my favorite because i don't know what's with it it just uh, sits like butter i usually finish all of my excess even though this is 150 dollar x i actually went through the process of uh, fine tuning it let's say i also have a video about that and it will be down in the description now when it comes to shelter you need again multi-purpose items so that's why i would again as for a beginner i would recommend a lavu uh, poncho tent which really is two ponchos that go together and make a tent uh, i will not go in many details about it you can watch the beginner video about it uh, it is very versatile uh, you can use just a single poncho uh, to get some cover and uh, have that kind of open uh, night uh, sleep uh, in the woods or you can cover it up you can use it as a hot tent in winter you can use it as open tent in summer you can use it as a poncho in rain so it is a very multi-purpose item the price at the point of making this video is 45 dollars i'd say that uh, that one tent won't be enough for example if you are uh, going on a uh, hiking trip on a multiple day hiking trip that heavy poncho is not very uh, useful uh, to take and for that case i will recommend a tarp so uh, for an intermediate bushcrafter i recommend two shelter options having a lavu tent and having a tarp uh, there are many options for tarps and the tarp that I would recommend, uh, which I personally have and it, which is very good quality and very cheap, is the DD tarp, uh, DD hammocks tarp. Uh, DD tarp uh, is uh, from the United Kingdom. Uh, 
uh, it is great quality and and the price at the point of making this video is $55 so uh, I, as I remember uh, back when I bought it it was a discount I think it was a Christmas discount or something like that and I got it for like uh, $35 so it is a very very good bank for your buck and Having a tarp is very useful because uh, it is 3x3 three three meters, therefore it is quite long, it is quite big, you can fit two people and dogs under it quite comfortably by having an open shelter or you can also configure it in a way that it is a tent uh, as I have done. Uh, in this case you can also close the door so it is fully covered so generally speaking it is a great option and uh, having these two shelter options will give you a lot of versatility on any kind of trip Now, when it comes to fire starting, I would recommend the same thing to an intermediate bushcrafter as I would to a beginner. Get a big, beefy ferro rod. Now, the ferro rods that you are seeing is all made by me. This is my personal one. This was a second or third ever ferro rod I have ever made. Uh, I did some checkering on it, but it has a nice, comfortable big handle. And about 100 ferro rods later, uh, here are today's or yesterday's work these are the same uh, slightly upgraded a uh, six inch by half inch thick ferro rods and they have this kind of exhibition grade handles now when I recommended the ferro rod to a beginner uh, I recommended the cheapest option there was but uh, since you are more involved in bushcraft now you can spend a bit more extra and get something a bit nicer this ferro rod is desert ironwood and this ferro rod is snake wood as I said both of these ferro rods are made by me six inch by half inch thick and this is my design of ferro rods so if you see someone with a similar design they are stealing from me i have been making this design since back when getting these size ferro rods was uh, not this easy uh, so i put press bolsters just like on the knives on the ferro rods they have a vulcanite spacer some case in some cases a g10 spacer and some kind of exhibition grade wood in this case this is snake wood which is a very rare and expensive wood and this is iron wood which is also one of the most rare woods in the world and one of the most dense ferro rods like this usually cost 130 dollars but since you're my subscribers you will get a discount and if you want a ferro rod like this you will get one for 90 dollars they also come with a leather belt holder, a decorated leather belt. It is also made with vegetable tanned leather, very high quality. And again, this ferro rod design is mine. You cannot find anything like that anywhere. If you find, tell me, that means someone is stealing from me. Uh, it has a basket with decorations, just like on the knife. And it also is a very, very high quality. You can get a ferro rod like this for special price on my website, as I said nixbushcraftshop.com and to get a discount uh, use the contact form on there and contact me and I'll make sure that you get a special price because you are a special person since you are viewing my videos I really really appreciate that since we are covered with one method of starting a fire we have a nice reliable big beefy ferro rod that's what she said <laughs> uh, you'll also need another way to start a fire to practice more uh, primitive fire making now practicing bow drill fire is very good but even the very very best and even the professionals uh, cannot do it every single time so another great fire starting method is flint and steel this is a flint and steel that i got from i think it was flintandsteel.com it is a very nice kit that comes with a uh, belt uh, pouch like this it is made from leather it also comes with uh, char cloth 
the main steel and uh, some flint. In this case, in this case, this is obsidian. I added it myself. This is uh, flint and also some jute wine. Now to start the fire uh, with the flint and steel method, you need to take a char cloth, which is basically cloth that has been charred like this. And you take your uh, you take your flint, or in this case obsidian, put the char cloth on top of it and strike it with this steel striker. Basically what's happening when starting a flint and steel fire is uh, the hard rock, in this case obsidian or flint, is removing micro uh, chips from the steel when striking it and lights them and gives them, give, turns them into sparks. Then you catch the sparks with this char cloth uh, Therefore, you have a nice amber. You move that into your tinder. In this case, I usually uh, split up the jute wine and that makes a great, great uh, tinder. But in some cases, you may find natural materials like cat's tail, old man's beard on evergreen trees and etc. And you can start the fire uh, from there. It is a great method. It is also very nice to practice this skill because this is how uh, people started fires. Uh, for many many centuries. Uh, in this case this flint and steel kit is very nice. It comes all ready and if you have the budget you can buy it and at the point of making this video this costs $65 but it is really really uh, very easy to make it. You can buy jute wine for nothing. You can make your own char cloth. You can find flint or obsidian by yourself and the main thing is this forged steel piece and I will make a video on how anyone basically anyone with minimal minimal tools can uh, forge this kind of steel to start fires with. Now that you have roof over your head making a, a bed is not always an option maybe you don't have time or maybe you are in that kind of woodland where you cannot make a nice bed and it will be very time consuming. In that situation you need kind, some kind of sleeping system. The sleeping system that I would recommend is getting a sleeping bag. Uh, the sleeping bag that I'm going to recommend is the one that I personally have and have had for over five years. It is the Teton Sports uh, minus five degrees Celsius uh, sleeping bag. It is a three season sleeping bag. It has kept me warm in many, many cold nights and uh, I can recommend it. it uh, it is not uh, really that high end or anything, but uh, it works. Uh, the weight is also not that heavy, so it is a great uh, sleeping bag and I can, re I can recommend it. Uh, the price of that at the point of making this video is $50. Alternatively, if you don't want to buy that, you can go always go with military surplus. Military surplus has a lot of great uh, sleeping bags, especially the US military surplus. They have great sleeping bags. They have a whole sleeping system that consists from three or four parts, as I remember. Uh, you don't need at all because that is for cold weather and for wet weather as well. So you can choose from that. So basically uh, on a $50 budget, you can buy a decent uh, sleeping bag. Uh, only sleeping bag won't keep you warm at night, so you need some kind of uh, sleeping pad as well. Um, back, back in the day when I was thinking about this, I did a lot of research and uh, I came to the conclusion that I'd rather have a durable uh, sleeping pad rather uh, than a comfortable but less durable one. So that's why I went with the uh, Thermarest Soul Light sleeping pad. I'm a side sleeper and it is not uh, very comfortable to sleep on the side, but it works great. Uh, it, it has a reflective coating, therefore it reflects heat towards you and uh, it is quite versatile and it doesn't have the option to uh, release air and leave you on cold ground at night, which an air mattress uh, has. An air mattress is more comfortable, but uh, something may uh, poke it and uh, you may end up on cold ground at night. You can also get a close open cell cell foam, which is that kind of self-inflating cell foams. But it is a bit heavy and again, even that not always works. Uh, so getting a Thermarest Redressed is a very, very good option. The price of Thermarest uh, Redressed So Light uh, at the point of making this video is $50. 
If you are a side sleeper like me, only a thermal rest in winter is not enough and that's why I will recommend the same thing that I recommended to beginners in the previous video and get some kind of hide, for example a goat hide or a sheep hide and something like that usually costs around $15, well at least that's what I paid. That I will recommend is some kind of cordage and in this case paracord. It is very tough and that's why uh, it is so good uh, in any kind of outdoor applications, whether it will be uh, making ridge lines for your tarp or tying jam knots uh, or making boats, everything uh, works with paracord. It has seven inner strands and one outer strand and therefore it is very useful uh, in different kind of situations, for example, if you don't have enough uh, cordage, small amount of uh, paracord gives you seven times more than what you have. So that's why I recommend it, and I also recommend changing your boots laces with paracord. And in this case, and in that case, uh, I have found myself in quite a few situations where I needed some kind of cordage, and there I had my boots. I just removed all of the inner strands, uh, left the outer strand as my boot laces and used the inside as very useful item uh, out in the woods. To carry all of this gear, again, I will recommend getting a Swedish LK35 as I did in my uh, beginner's video. I will not go on many details as well, uh, but it is a great durable option. You can watch the beginner video for more details about that. Uh, and the price of that is $45. Also, having only that uh, in some cases won't be enough because uh, especially in winter you have to carry a lot of gear and that's why I would recommend getting a bigger internal frame backpack, hiking backpack. Uh, in my case I have a 90 liter backpack uh, from Teton Sports but I'm a big guy, I carry a lot of gear in some cases. Um, Everything I carry is large size, so that's why I need the extra capacity, but a 75 liter backpack would be more than enough uh, for, I'd say, 90% of people on any kind of trip. So having an LK35 and a 70 liter uh, hiking backpack uh, will be more than enough for any kind of intermediate bushcrafter, and uh, you can get a 75 liter backpack in the price range of uh, $80. In at that price point, I feel comfortable that you can get a decent backpack uh, about which you won't be afraid that it will fail on you in the middle of nowhere. When it comes to a cooking kit, while previously for a beginner it was a bonus item and not a mandatory, this time I'd say that it is a mandatory item getting a pot like this with nesting pans and a good lid with some kind of uh, wire around it so that you can hang it from pot hangers. This one has two pans. I can boil water, cook food, I can put a handle on the plates and use it as a frying pan. Uh, also I can uh, bake a bread, I can bake other things by putting water beneath uh, the one plate and putting whatever I want to bake on top and then putting on the lid. It has to have some kind of option to uh, hang it and uh, this is a must uh, to any kind of intermediate bushcrafter. Also, I would recommend getting a cup, just like I recommended in the first video. Get a canteen cup with a lid. Uh, not always you need a pot, big size pot like this. Some, in some cases, one uh, cup like this will be more than enough. For example, in a, on a backpacking trip or on many other occasions where you don't want to mess with making uh, pot hangers and when you don't have time for that. And also, I would recommend getting a US military surplus mess kit. It is such a versatile item. I got this from my father. It is at least, uh, I don't know, I have it for like 15 years. My father had it for like 30 years. It is stainless steel and it is very, very versatile. You can use it as a pan to cook food. Uh, you, can, uh, you can use it as a Dutch oven to bake something inside. You can use the other side to split some food and use it as a plate. These three pieces of kit I'd say is a must to any kind of outdoorsman. Also, uh, I would recommend getting a kettle if you are like me and if you really really like tea, having a kettle is very useful. For example, uh, on a winter trip, on a hot tent trip to uh, boil water on a wood stove, uh, it comes in very handy. Uh, this uh, kettle is made by a company called Uberleben and uh, it is very durable and uh, very comfortable to use. 
the price of the pot i'm sure you can find something like this used or new around 20 dollars uh, you can buy the cup and the lid for 15 dollars and you can buy the uh, u.s uh, military surplus mess kit for around 15 dollars matter what kind of gear you have whether you don't have any gear at all knowledge is something that you cannot buy but in this case you can actually buy in the form of books as I recommended in my basic bushcraft kit I will recommend as a mandatory item getting uh, this book which if you don't already have you should definitely get it called bushcraft by Morse Kohansky the founding father of bushcraft uh, I went through details about it in the previous video you should check it out also i would recommend getting uh, shelters shacks and shanties by uh, daniel c beard uh, this has a lot of information about different kind of shelters and cabins out in the woods uh, i would also recommend one more book which i don't have with me and that is um, wild camping by Co horace kephart uh, as I remember and also this is uh, not that educational book but more of a kind of entertainment uh, woodcraft and camping by Nesmak AK George Washington Sears and it doesn't have any pictures but it just tells you about uh, his living in the outdoors it's a thin book and it is a great uh, read uh, next to a campfire So I'd say these two books are mandatory at the point of making this video. The bushcraft cost $17 and this costs uh, $10. And the more uh, books you can buy, the better it is for you in reality. But these two are mandatory for anyone. When you are going on the multiple day trips, you have to uh, do stuff at night and therefore you need some kind of lighting and getting a headlamp like this is mandatory as well I would recommend getting this through night I think the model is BSS H01 I will link it down in the description it costs $30 and it is a great very reliable uh, flashlight because I have tested it a lot I have tested in uh, winter and in cold environments and it worked very good and uh, I have been in many many situations where I just begged myself to take a, a bigger flashlight with me next time because there were many cases where for example I heard some animals uh, in distance I heard some uh, I saw some animals nearby some jackals were barking at me and stuff like that and having a, a flashlight like this is also very useful and um, this one has uh, quite a few functions and the main thing is that it has a turbo mode which blinds whatever you light it to for a few seconds. It also has this kind of aggressive uh, teeth on front so that you can use it as a self-protection item, uh, self-defense item. But you can also screw it off if you are not using it as an EDC flashlight and just to use it like this. Very useful flashlight and again this one is also tested and it has uh, proved itself uh, very good in many many situations. Next mandatory item I would recommend is getting a water filter. Now if in a basic video I mentioned a water filter as a bonus item, in this case it is a mandatory item because uh, even though where I live we are blessed with a lot of springs and every spring I'd say 99% of the springs are drinkable especially in the mountains but even in that case it is sometimes hard to afford uh, to risk drinking uh, spring water uh, while it can ruin your trip and it can, it can ruin your stomach very badly so another mandatory item is a water filter in this case I will recommend a Sawyer water filter uh, which filters uh, 100,000 gallons of water uh, and it costs $20 therefore it is a very very good bank for your buck and a mandatory item for I'd say most of the people on most places in the world because you cannot afford drinking dirty water especially if you are in deep woods and especially if you are far from the population uh, that is pretty much it of course there are 
a few more mandatory items that I would recommend, but I've mentioned them in the previous video, for example, a first aid kit and a few more items, so I didn't want to repeat myself and uh, if you missed that, you should watch the previous video as well, link will be down in the description. After this, there will be another video about the pro gear that I would recommend. And also, after this price guide videos are over, I will post videos about what do I think this kind of basic bushcraft trip looks like, what do I think about how the intermediate bushcraft trip looks like, and also you should definitely check those videos out if they are out again, it will be down in the description. So basically, you don't even need to watch this video, just go down in the description because I mentioned that in every second and uh, you will find everything. But uh, in reality, uh, I make quite a few interesting and very good videos, but the YouTube algorithm doesn't like me that much because I post rarely, but even though I post rarely, I post good quality content, whether especially, well, that's what I think and how I think, but you may disagree with that and again, uh, I respect your opinion. So comment down below your thoughts, your recommendations, please share this video and make sure to go and visit Nick's Bushcraft shop. I just launched this site today, so uh, no one knows about it in this video. You, are, you guys are the first one who will be visiting it. So. Uh, make sure to go there and if you have any questions use the contact form there and I will get to you right back and I will uh, contact you right back whether you have any kind of questions about orders or about knives or generally if you just want to say hi you can use the contact form on nixbushcraftshop.com so thank you very much for watching and make sure to stay safe this in, in these hard times and may God bless take care and have a nice day By the way, Max's leg is getting a bit better, as you saw, he is using it a bit better, but now a, a, a neighbor's dog accidentally beat his balls, so now sadly he cannot uh, swim until the wound is healed, I'm taking him to the wet, I'm, thanks. I'm telling you, I don't know who cursed my boy, but some crazy, crazy stuff happens, happens to him all the time. Like last summer, uh, two uh, Caucasian shepherds uh, escaped from their owner and beat him and he had like serious wounds that had to be stitched, like the whole meat inside was seen and crazy stuff like that. Then he had this leg thing, then also he always has some problems, but thank God he is a tough boy and he survives everything and I hope that he will be with me to many years to come because... Uh, I love him like my child and he is like my old elder child, my firstborn child. <laughs> Rocco is the small one, the crazy one and this one is the uh, major big uh, dog. So.